All right, so titration curve. So I want to go over the uh, sheet from yesterday. So let me open that. All right, so here goes. So no math involved here. We're just doing it sort of qualitatively. Do we know what's going along on along each point of the curve? And as I uh, pointed out yesterday, it's a little more important when you have a weak acid with a weak base for point B, but we'll get there. So we're using HCl and we're doing NaOH. So our equation is HCl plus NaOH yields NaCl and H2O. But really, it's H plus plus OH minus yields water. Why? Na, spectator ion. And Cl minus spectator ions. Right, so we got that. But that doesn't mean they aren't there. There still is chloride ions and there still are sodium ions. They're not going away. All right, so each of the diagrams below is a particulate representative of a small representative portion of the solution. So not the whole solution, but it's parts of it. For clarity, the water molecules are not shown. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. Something to remember with water. So it looks like Mickey Mouse with the positive between his ears. So. This would be the O, these are the H's, 109.5 bond angle, and it is polar going in that direction. So negative, always goes positive to the negative. All right, but they're not showing those. So sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. So based on the information in the pH curve, label each diagram as either A, B, C, or D. All right, so what are we looking at here? So these are NAs. We have six NAs, and we have six Cl minuses. And this one, eight Na pluses, six Cl minuses, two OH minuses. Okay, so this one, so that's the H plus. So we have six H pluses, six Cl minuses, and then over here, three H pluses, six Cl minuses, three. So what are we looking at here? So remember, this is the reaction. So the reaction is, I do this right here in the middle. We're adding HCl plus NaOH, and we're getting NaCl, and we're getting H2O. All right, so point A. So point A is acid only. So the acid is added and we have acid only. So this is letter A. This is in the beginning. You add HCl and there is no chemical reaction happening because you haven't added um, NaOH yet. All right, so the other easy one is right here at C. Because right here you have only acid, as we talked about. Now you start adding base, 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 until you get to C. And this is where the acid, the moles of acid, equal the moles of base. So in other words, this is gone and this is gone, and you only have what's on the other side. Don't forget, NaCl also exists. So at letter C, we should have no acid or no base, meaning no H plus and no OH minus. So that's this one. So this is letter C. This is where uh, the acid and the base are in exactly equal proportions. Well, anywhere along the curve from A to C, you have more acid than you do base. So we have more HCl than we do NaOH. So NaOH is the limiting all the way up to letter C because you're starting with moles of acid and you're starting with zero moles of base. So you keep adding moles of base until the two meet. That's at letter C. So at letter B here, we should have leftover acid, but no leftover base. The base is the limiting reactant. So that would be this one. So you can see we added NaOH because there should be three OH minuses. There should also be three more H pluses because you have six CLs. Well, those three H pluses and three OH minuses made three H2Os and that's not represented in the picture. So this is letter B. This is where the acid is in excess. And then the last one is gonna be, all right, so here the acid is greater than the base. Here the two are equal. So now anywhere past here is where the base now has more moles than the acid. So the acid is now the limiting 
um, and the base is the excess, so we have some excess hydroxides left over. So that's letter D. So we have A, B, C, and Now we have even more. So we have those same points. We have A. Now this would be the same as we had before, because this is the equivalence point. Here's where the acid equals the base. Over here, we have more base than acid. And anywhere down here, we have more acid than base. But now we're going to form a buffer. Why? Well, we have a weak acid and we have NaOH. So the reaction is going to give us equation. So we have CH3COONA, which is really, again, spectator ion, and then water. So when this is the excess reactant, and this is the limiting reactant, that means there's none of this left, which means we're, we have some of this left, but we've also made some of this. So this is the weak acid and its conjugate base. There's something else we need to learn about that, and that is point C is referred to as we said yesterday, as the half equivalence point. At the half equivalence point, now up here, the acid that you're reacting is equal to the base, but along here, we're talking about the ratio between the two buffer species. So the weak acid and its conjugate. From A to C, so in other words, that letter B, before the half equivalence point, you have more weak acid than you do conjugate base. So there's more weak acid than there is conjugate base. The formula that you use to do this is pH is equal to the pKa plus the log, remember, of the base over the acid. So now we're looking at this ratio right here. All along point from A up to C, so in other words, point B, you have more of the weak acid, so this one, more of the weak acid than you do the conjugate base. Once you cross the half equivalence point, because that letter C, now the weak acid is equal to the concentration of the conjugate base. In other words, this and this have the same number of moles. What is the ramifications of that? So that means their molarity is equal, which means you're taking the log of one and the log of one is zero. In other words, at this half equivalence point, the pH is equal to the pKa. So we can actually read the graph here. Looks like maybe 4.8, let's say. So that's the pKa, which means the Ka is 10 to the negative pKa, just like the H3O plus is 10 to the negative pH. And the OH minus is 10 to the negative pOH. The Ka is 10 to the negative pKa. So 10 to the negative 4.8. We could figure out uh, the conjugate or the acid Ka value. All right, so now down here we have more boxes. So what do we have going on down here? Now, well, the easy ones, this one, you only have HC2H3O2, according to the chart. So this is the acid only. Uh, what else do we have that's easy to pick out? This one's easy to pick out. We have no acid or base. So this is at the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, no acid, no base. The other one that's going to be easy to pick out then would be the one that is after the equivalence point. So the initial one is pretty easy. The, equi uh, the equivalence point is pretty easy. And then the afterwards, because now you should have some OH minus left over. So now the OH minus is in excess. So which one? Um, this one over here, you can see we have OH minus left over. So this is going to be after the equivalence point. All right, so we have A figured out. So this is A, acid only. We have E figured out at the equivalence point. And then we have F figured out after the equivalence point. So what we're trying to deal with then is what about B, C, and D? So like I said, at C, the half equivalence point, the weak acid is equal to the concentration of the conjugate base. So now we got to start counting. So one, two, three, we have three sodiums. One, two, three, C2H3O2 minuses. And we have one, two, three of the acid. 
And this one, four of the acid, two of the Na plus, and, or no, is that the, or sorry, the Na plus, yeah. And then two of the C2H3O2 minus. And then the last one here, we have one, two, three, four of the C2H3O2 minus, four of the Na plus, two of the acid. So the ratio from acid to base here is two for the base over four. Over here, it's um, four over two. And in this one, it's three over three. So in this one, the acid and the base are equal. So this is the half equivalence point, letter C. So this is C. Well, in this one, now we have more acid than we do conjugate base. So this is before the half equivalence point. That's B, where we have more acid than we do its conjugate. But in this one, you have more of the conjugate than you do the acid. So this is after the half equivalence point. So that makes that letter D. So once again, these three points in the buffer zone, we can always use this equation. So let me point this out as well, because we're going to do some of these calculations tomorrow. So at point C, this is equal. The log of 1 is 0. And so the pH is equal to the pKa. At point B, now they make you do these for the multiple choice. So we do have to be able to do these without a calculator, which is a log. So how are we going to figure that out? Here's what we need to know. All right, so at point B, we now have more acid, less of the conjugate base. So what is the log? So in other words, we're taking the log of a number that is, we're dividing by a bigger number, so it is less than 1. In other words, a decimal. Let's look at it on a calculator. I don't know if I shared my calculator. Let me share my calculator. Wait, let me, let me go to here. Uh, let me let me stop the share. Let me share my screen. Okay. So here's my calculator. Should be able to see that. Now. All right. So um, the log of one is zero. So that's where the two are equal. Now we're doing the log of a number less than one. Now, not negative, but a number less than one, like 0.99999, let's say, right? So the log of 0.99, oops, log of 0.99. Notice it's negative 0 0.04, the log of 0.5, another, another less than one. So smaller number, notice negative 0.3, the log of 0.1, negative one, the log of 0.25, negative 0.6, right? So negative numbers. So when you take the log of a number less than one, you get a negative number. What is the importance of that? So what that means is when you solve for this, the pKa is the half equivalence point. Well, if the, at the point B, we have more acid than we do conjugate base, which is why the pH is a little lower. So we're subtracting from the pKa, whatever that value is. When we get to D, now it's the other way around. The pH equals the pKa plus the log. Now we have more base than we do acid. So more base than acid. So now you're taking a log of a number greater than one, which is positive, the log of two, the log of three, the log of four. So the log of a number greater than one is positive. So now the pH goes up. Right, so in this zone right here, we know the half equivalence point. We know the pH, so we know the pKa. And we know that if we have more acid, then it's going to be a little lower pH according to the buffer calculation. And if we have um, more of the conjugate base, then it's a little bit higher. And then you get to the equivalence point. So the equivalence point here you can see is at around 8.6 or so. So that is a basic salt, which we would have predicted anyway, because the weak acid strong base. All right, last one. No, two more, sorry. Two more? Yeah. 
Okay, so now we have strong base, strong acid. But now we're starting with the base. So notice the pH. We didn't do one like this, but it's the same as the first one. It's the same in the first one in that you don't have to worry about the buffer zone because there is no buffer. No buffer. It's not a weak acid or a weak base. So no buffer. So we just do our calculations. So the same as before. This is the now the base only. Here the base is in excess. The acid is the limiting. Here the two are equal. And here the acid is in excess. So, you know, the same shaped curve as the first one, just opposite. We're starting in higher pHs and ending up in lower. So we're going to do the same thing down here. So uh, just looking at that quickly. So letter C, this is the easy one. We only have, we don't have any acid or base. Uh, and in this one, we have acid left over. Um, and so that's going to be, or no, uh, which one do we have acid only? Uh, acid only is the next easy one to pick out. Did I do that wrong? Um, so H and Cl. So we're looking for the little one and the filled in gray ones. Oh, I'm sorry, we have base. Sorry, I'm doing it backward. You're right. Base, picking in my head something else. So we should be looking for the base only. Yeah, so Na and OH, which is this one. So this is letter A this time. So we're starting with the base. This is the equivalence point. So now the other two, so here we have base left over. Here we have acid left over. So D is going to be when the acid is in excess. We have acid left over. And then B is going to be when we've started adding acid, but not enough. The base is left over. And then the last one, just like the other one we did, we have a buffer zone again. This time it's the weak base NH3 only. We're adding HCl, equivalence point, acid only. Acid equals the base. Notice the pH is less than seven, so it's an acidic salt, which we would predict, weak base, conjugate acid. And now we have the buffer zone. So we have the half equivalence point where the weak base is equal to the conjugate acid. Here we have more conjugate acid than we do weak base. And here we have more weak base than we do conjugate acid. All right, so base only, let's start at the beginning. So we're looking for one that only has NH3. So right here, this is the base only, so that's letter A. Next one, the easy one is the equivalence point. So we're looking at the equivalence point we should have. Now, what should we have? Well, we have NH4 and we have uh, Cl minus, um, and because the H and the NH3 are going to be equal. So we should have, so that would be here. We have NH3 left over, so it ain't that one. Here we have acid left over. It's not that one. Here we have base left over again. It's not that one. So right here we have no acid, no base. So we only have the salt. So this is D. This is the equivalence point. So now we're at the equivalent, or E, sorry, E. E, the equivalence point. Let's do F past the equivalence point. So now we only have acid left over. And as I said, that would be this one. So we have, this is F, we have acid left over. So now all of the other ones are gonna have base left over and we're looking for which one has equal number of acid or weak base and conjugate, which one has more weak base than conjugate and which one has more conjugate than weak base. So uh, this is our weak base. So we have one, two, three, and we have one, two, three. So there's the two where they're equal. That is letter C. And this, one. We'll do this one over here. So we have one, two, three, four of the acid, two of the base. So this is before the equivalence point. So this is letter B. And then one, two, one, two, three, four. This one has more of the conjugate than the weak base. So this is uh, D. All right. So that's all I got for today. Let me know if you need any help as always.